20 minutes. Make any the board and then yeah, nothing too drastic. I'm not Bill O'Reilly or anything, so so I'm gonna be John Hannity. <laughs> okay. Questions. <laughs> All right, we'll just get started. Bonjour, welcome to uh, the Johnny R Show, and today's special guest is uh, Red Lake Tribal Council Secretary Candidate Judy Roy. Thank you for coming on, Judy. Thank Appreciate you, Appreciate it. Thank it's good to see you again. Do I need the mic any closer? Uh, no, that should be fine right there. Okay. Yeah. Unless you're going to yell, I'll move it back a little more. I will. <laughs> but yeah, I appreciate you coming. Appreciate you coming on, and this is a. Uh, Good for all the voters that aren't able to get all, the, all to all the forums and stuff. So hopefully they, hopefully they get to check this out. So uh, I don't know. Just get started. What, what you want to say? What's your uh, your uh, platform and all that stuff? Okay. Thank you. Welcome. I hope uh, you're well and able to enjoy this show from beautiful downtown Red Lake. I should explain first of all that I am. <clears throat> a wounded candidate. Uh, about a month ago, my Great Dane puppy charged into the house in front of me when I was carrying in groceries and uh, caused me to fall and bust my kneecap in half. So I'm having the lovely experience of having had knee surgery and now I will have to be immobilized for at least four more weeks um, in this immobilizer on my leg. So it's hindered my ability to get around a lot, but I'm very thankful for this opportunity to speak to voters that I haven't been able to visit. Mm -hmm. okay. Anything in particular? Um, you know, just a quick background, okay. your family life and your, your work. Well, it can't be too quick when you're 66 years old. Um, that, that might take a little while. But um, I was born and raised in Red Lake, and uh, my first job here was as a Head Start teacher aide. I went on to become a teacher, and then eventually the Head Start director uh, jobs, which I held for 22 years. And so I'm very... Um, I used to be very well acquainted with generations of Red Lake kids who later became parents, who later became grandparents. When I started um, asking kids who their grandparents were, I knew I was um, getting up there a bit. But after I worked in Head Start, I went to work for Chairman Butch Brunn, who was newly elected who created the post of executive administrator for me with the mm -hmm. tribal council. And as such, I was in charge of all the tribal programs, supervision of them. And I was um, also in charge of the tribal businesses. We didn't have any separate kind of business development branch mm -hmm. at the time. So I did that for four years when Chairman Brunn decided not to run for a second term. I filed for secretary, which was being vacated by then uh, Secretary Whitefeather, who ran for chairman. So I was elected, thanks to your support, and I did that for 12 years. After 12 years of being secretary, I had it in my mind that I would like to try for chairman and to be the one who set the tone for the administration. And so I ran in 2006 and I was defeated and I ran again in 2010 and I was defeated again. So um, I'm going back to uh, trying for tribal secretary. Now, just because I was secretary for three terms, I have no feeling or opinion that I own the job. Mm -hmm. What I always emphasize is that when we're elected to a four-year term, that's our job for four years. Unless we really screw it up royally, mm -hmm. then the people have a means of getting rid of us. But just because I did the job for three terms, I never considered it mine. Okay. That's the beauty of a, of a democracy, yeah. is that every four years the jobs are open 
anyone who is eligible can apply mm -hmm. and it's a healthy sign in Red Lake that we always have we always have a good slate of candidates mm -hmm. for each position and we still have people even though sometimes campaigns can get brutal and um, you're in for or for some shenanigans sometimes we still have people who are willing to try it and who are willing to take that risk and put themselves out there to be mm -hmm. judged by our own people and so I'm happy to say that I'm one of five candidates for the uh, position of secretary. I have done the job before. I know it well. I know the constitutional duties of what a secretary is expected to do. I also know um, what the ordinances along the years, through the years, have added on to the secretary's duties. We were the first tribe in the country to have our own license plates mm -hmm. and with that came the whole department uh, the need for an entire department to take on the registration and the record keeping and the design and the maintenance of mm -hmm. of the motor vehicle license department and that was assigned to the secretary mm -hmm. in the same way the upkeep and maintenance of the tribal code has been assigned to the secretary and the enrollment ordinance assigns the duties of enrollment to the secretary. So these are um, some of the things. The secretary's office also runs the elections and any referenda which are voted on by the people. So it's a bigger job than is um, described in the Constitution, but it's one with, with which I'm well familiar and one which I am confident that I can do well. Mm -hmm. Any anything occur to you? Um, from there, just uh, like you said, you were uh, secretary for three terms before. Yes. And then, uh, what uh, what made you run for uh, seat the higher office of chairman at the time? Then? Because I thought that it would be it would be good to be able to set the tone. Yeah. The chairman is the CEO for the entire band. Mm -hmm. And as secretary, that's an important job as is, as is treasurer mm -hmm. and as are the representatives. But I see a need for us to be mature as a people. Yeah. I see a need for us not to have vindictive and um, adversarial elections. Yeah. I see the need for us to, to work together more than just, you know, all voting 10 yes mm -hmm. and zero opposed. It, it's more the need to trust each other, to be able to debate controversial items, mm -hmm. to um, fully disagree, and yet to come to the decision that's best for the entire yeah. tribe. And I saw a real need for that, mm -hmm. and I wanted to be the one to kind of lead us into that, mm -hmm. into that new day. But apparently, um, I didn't explain it in, well enough. Yeah. Or the tribe wasn't ready for a woman, or whatever, mm -hmm. whatever the case may be. Yeah. That's the beauty of it. You know, mm -hmm. the people talk, and the people decide with their votes, mm -hmm. and so I'm fine yeah. with that. Well, that's what I always thought. You know, I for years, you know, I just started paying attention to paying attention to tribal politics the last ten years or so, and I always saw uh, older men are, you know, the main the main uh, you know, dominant in the tribal council. I saw you, and then after you, Jody Bolio, mm -hmm. and then Glenda Martin was in there, but now it's all strictly men, mm -hmm. and I don't know if that's. Uh, the times going back, or or what's going on? But I think the, the female voice needs to, to get back in there. Yeah. We're known as you know in sociological terms, we're known as a covert matriarchy, mm -hmm. which means that the women are running things, but in the background. Yeah. Yeah. And so yeah, we need to come out from the shadows, and we need to um, impose or to deliver some of the more. Um, some of the more feminine 
uh, views of, mm -hmm. of issues and aspects of raising a family and no. how to deal with poverty, how to deal with educational mm -hmm. problems. There is a difference and it's no use denying it and I think it, it would uh, serve us well to have mm -hmm. both viewpoints at the table. Uh, I tried politics a couple times but you know, I read a lot. I watch a lot of TV and like the lawyer shows, like uh, The West Wing. I love that West mm -hmm. Wing show, and I, I saw where it's um, when you get into politics, all your all your morals, all your beliefs. You know, you want to put everything you have to get everything across, but there's going to be some like uh, you're going to have to. What's the word? Um, ah, it's slipping my mind. Now. But you can't get. You have to compromise your morals to get. You know, it's like a trade-off. You can't come that's, out. Yeah, that's the way Hollywood would have us believe. And mm -hmm. I suppose there's plenty of evidence in yeah. reality, too, and we see yeah. what goes on in Washington and, and at the state capitals. But it doesn't have to be that way. Yeah. It doesn't. Um, we live together, and especially here as a tribe, mm -hmm. with our tribal customs and values, we should be able to go through a campaign season respecting each yeah. other and um, and giving each other credit for our accomplishments and come through it being mm -hmm. able to work together, mm -hmm. um, being able to pull together and harness. Otherwise, if we keep on with this tugging and this side is better th than that side, this side is going to get the jobs this round mm -hmm. and that side's locked out of everything that's going on. Mm -hmm. What we need are more jobs. Yeah. We need jobs for everyone so that we don't have to fight over mm -hmm. them and so that they don't have to be used as political favors. Yeah. That um, That's, I think, the root of so many of our problems. Mm -hmm. yeah. And one other thing I wanted to mention too, because I didn't get to go to the forums, is that um, I still hold um, the secretary's office responsible for delivering a referendum on enrollment. Mm -hmm. When I was secretary, we had a vote asking the people, do you want to vote about mm -hmm. the eligibility criteria for being enrolled in the mm -hmm. tribe? And it was an overwhelming yes. We have not provided uh, a conclusive referendum for the people to vote on mm -hmm. because a referendum in order to be binding has to be a yes or no question. And we were in the middle of um, a study by our Red Lake College students to look at the demographics of all the six choices we had mm -hmm. and to say if we do it this way, this is what our tribe is going to look like in 10, 20 years. And that was cut short because I lost. Mm -hmm. And so um, we need to get back to that. Uh, the people are owed that referendum. Mm -hmm. And I don't, have, um, I don't have an ax to grind one way or another, but I know that the people asked for it and they deserve it. Let me hold on. That thought, I gotta change tapes here because we're running out of battery. I'll be right back. Okay. Uh, okay. Not on that, uh, what you're talking about, the, the reform, the, the, um, the enrollment. Uh, why are they were, they did their, redid their enrollment and there, it sounds like their enrollment's gonna go up higher and higher now. And uh, I got a great nephew. He's, uh, I think he's like one eighth Red Lake and not enough to uh, to uh, get enrolled now. Mm -hmm. but he won't be able to get enrolled. And, um, like what's something you're talking about with that, how would that affect him then? Well, it would depend on the choice. We had one of the options was to go to one eighth blood quantum. Yeah. But any mathematical choice is gonna wind us up in trouble eventually. It only takes four generations of intermarriage, mm -hmm. even if we all started as four-fourths, to, um, to eliminate the red lake one-fourth blood quantum. So it's a complicated, mm -hmm. it's a complicated, complicated question. Um, you know, people fear that if we widen it too much and go to something like just descendancy, that we will balloon to like 50, 60,000 members and mm -hmm. and the resources won't be enough to, uh, yeah, to go with it. 
we, you know, even with our land base, we would still be hard, hard put to, to give land use assignments to that many people. So it needs careful, it needs careful deliberation and careful study, and all of the all of the ramifications need to be laid out for people to consider. Mm -hmm. that's, you know, both you know, going to both both sides of that, that's pretty. You know, we gotta try and find a way to balance that out. Because me, I'm, I got three grandparents that are full blood Red mm -hmm. Lakers. I got one that's full blood White Earth. So I'm three quarters Red Lake, and then my wife, she's, uh, her dad was a full blood, and her mom was, I don't remember what it was, but my kids were like 45, 64 or something. I know, and it even sounds, you know, there's something wrong with us having to describe yeah. ourselves like that with yeah. those mathematical equations, because in our hearts we are who yeah. we are, you know, I'm, I'm a Red Lake Anishinaabe, and that's who I was born, and that's... Yeah. Well, that is, and um, I don't say, well, one eighth of me is this and one eighth yeah. of me is that. So it's it's a it's a very um, bureaucratic method that was imposed upon our people, and we've bought into it somewhere along the line, and mm -hmm. it's up to us to get ourselves out from under it. Yeah, that's a tough one there, but um. Hello, where do you see, you know, if you're elected, um, where do you see the Red Lake in the next four years? Then? What would be your uh, your influence on the next four years? Well, in addition to us being a kinder, gentler yeah. nation, um, I, I would hope that we would have more jobs. Mm -hmm. One of um, I've never been one to think that we're going to have some huge corporation or industry come in and save us, create a thousand jobs and provide for employment. I think the answer is a slow but steady progress to take a look at, okay, we have a community of 8,000 people. What should we expect that community to support? How many insurance companies could we have here? How many beauty salons? How many restaurants? Like you know, like this one just starting up. How many um, oil change places? You know, I've always thought it's silly. We have all these tribal vehicles, and we should have a place owned privately where we can take them and provide at least a couple jobs to people changing the oils on the oil on them, yeah. and um, just to take a look at a. At a how much money we spend off the reservation when it could be recycled many more times here to provide jobs for people here. We can't, um, we can't depend on gaming. It's been a boom and uh, you know, thank God for it, but we can't depend on it forever. And it's, it's not a healthy way to, to create an economy. A lot of times, all we're doing is recycling our own poverty. Yeah, I can tell you it about is. that. You know, when, when eventually, we're all no jobs around here. Nobody's gonna have money to put in our casino and then casino mm -hmm. go down. Mm -hmm. But that you know, that's a good question. What what could happen in four years? And um, what I what I would hope is that people become empowered and think of themselves as worthy and as deserving of a better life. We have, um, I love Red Lake, I love the Red Lake Reservation, but we have so many problems with uh, social ills like drugs and alcohol and abuse and neglect and we deserve better. Mm -hmm. And if we continue to think of ourselves as victims, you know, well, it's the government's fault, well, it's the white people's fault, we, that we're like this, then we'll continue to be victims. Mm -hmm. We have to say, that's, you know, be that as it may, for our own good, we know we can do better, we know we deserve better, mm -hmm. and our children deserve better. Mm -hmm. And I think, um, the people taking that power onto themselves. Even our Constitution is described as saying, 
The power that's delegated to the tribal council is delegated by the people. Anything that isn't delegated, the people keep to themselves. And the people don't realize how powerful mm -hmm. they are, we are. And to depend on 11 people on a tribal council to solve all of our problems is just foolish. Mm -hmm. You know, it's fooling ourselves and it's not giving ourselves mm -hmm. enough credit. I like that word, em empower. That's the, the main thing around here. Everybody, you know, I think it was uh, Al Franken that came up here one time, he was talking, talking to a guy and talking about, I don't know, diabetes came up and mm -hmm. are you diabetic? And the guy said, no, no, not yet. You know, Al mm -hmm. Franken said that the defeatist attitude it seems like Red Lakers have, or just it just comes out. We don't don't realize it. Yes. You know, that's, we think it's inevitable, yeah. and so we don't do anything to yeah. change that. Yes. Fear of uh, success or something, or we're not worthy, and stuff like that. Yeah. It's it's a it's a profound kind of question, and that's mm -hmm. why I say on my website that. I want us all to get into a higher level of thinking mm -hmm. about our problems and look at them strategically, look at why something has to be this way, why something is this way, why do we expect, accept that it has to be this way, and, and you know, put that all aside and say, all right, maybe, maybe that's the way it is, but let's change that mm -hmm. then. Okay, I don't know if we have tape or bed we have left, but uh, right, any closing remarks that you want to tell the voters? Well, I guess I'm, I'm conscious that I am older than some of the candidates and that I have a history. And I know that when you have a history, people can judge you on it and say, well, you were in there for 12 years, why didn't you change it then? Mm -hmm. you know, why, why didn't you do something about it then? And it's because, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't in charge. I wasn't setting the tone. I did, you know, things as best I could as secretary. And I, I'm proud of the job I did. But I also think that um, for 20 of the past, for the past 20 years, I've been employed for 12 of those years. I've been unemployed for eight of those years. And it's been good for me. It's been good for me to know what it's like to live on social security, to be actually among, below the poverty level. It's been good for me to know what the struggle is and um, I've learned a lot from it. But I haven't just been sitting at home, you know, um, twiddling my thumbs or on Facebook all day. I, um, I've been active in, in um, a variety of boards that have given me good experience in, in um, health with the uh, Sanford Bemidji Board of Trustees, with education, with the Circle of Nations School in Wapachin, with mental health with the Upper Mississippi Mental Health Center, and with economics and philanthropy with mm -hmm. the Northwest Minnesota Foundation. And so, I'm still learning, and I hope to continue to keep learning all the rest of my life. And I think with that education and experience, I would bring something close to what an old-time elder, you know, I can't give myself that title or something that's bestowed on you by others. But I think I'm approaching, you know, some of the combination of, of uh, education and experience that might approach wisdom. Mm -hmm. And I would very much like to put it to work for our people. And I would appreciate your support. Um, thank you very much for, for your kindness and your consideration um, throughout this election campaign. Thank you, John. Yep, thank you I didn't bring you a present like John. <laughs> should have started beating. That's right. <laughs> but you got any numbers you want to put up here, your Facebook? Or? Yes. Well, I have my own Facebook page, but I'm also at Judy Roy for Tribal Secretary. My home phone number is 218-679-3775. It's useless to give my cell phone number because I never turn my cell phone on. 
Um, my email is Judy underscore Roy one at yahoo.com. Okay. Thank you for coming on, Judy. And I uh, thank uh, C's Coffee Shop for hosting us. 679-3763. C's Coffee Shop dot com is Judy's uh, experience sugar in free. Uh, sugar free beverage. But uh, more candidates, come on, come on, come on over. We'll have some fun. See, I'm not mean. People think I'm mean for some reason. Well, go on, he's gonna say something. He just kicks under the table, that's all. That's what it is, uh, that's yes. why I get straight answers. <laughs> well, we have the forum tomorrow, and uh, I think it's at the Red Lake Center because there's a wake and uh, oh, okay. So I'll be there, I'll sneak up on some candidates and uh, go from there. Okay. All right, Thanks, thank you, Judy. Judy.